Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2012 horror film called, Excision. Spoiler ahead. Seat back, relax and enjoy. The movie begins with a vivid dream of a girl named, Pauline. In her dreams, she sees herself full of blood while she is moaning. When she wakes up panting in an orgasmic state, she fixes herself to eat breakfast with her family. Inside the master's bedroom, Phyllis, her mother, is disgusted as her father forgets to lift the lid in the bathroom. In the other room, Grace, her sister, uses an apparatus to make her breathing well. During their breakfast, Phyllis finds Pauline inappropriate manners while eating, so she disciplines her, resulting in Pauline leaving. Her mother sarcastically says that she is allowed to be excused and look in the eyes of Grace, thanking her that she got her. Inside her sex education class, her teacher is educating them about sexually transmitted diseases, and Pauline raises her hand to ask questions. Her teacher gives her the floor and asks if it is possible to gain sexually transmitted disease if someone does sex with a dead body. Everyone laughs at her question, and her teacher refuses to answer it because he believes that it was not a serious question and decides to call for another person who could give a real question. The class is over, and Pauline goes to sit on the benches with two fabulous ladies gossiping. There, Pauline overhears anything that they gossip about. The other lady is telling her previous awkward moment with her boyfriend during their trip in fantasies. She expresses that his banana is not her ideal type and was difficult for him to make it harder and longer. Her friend starts to parody the bananas of her boy by using her chips and later judges her boyfriend that he might be gay. Not long after, her boyfriend enters the scene, and Pauline says intentionally that they are gossiping about him and thinks that he is gay. Phyllis fetches Pauline to her school. Her mother commands her to buckle up, but she refuses, which results in her mother reprimanding that she should act like an adult if she wants to be treated as an adult. While driving, her mother asks about her day, but she doesn't want to share anything, and her mother stops the car and presses the horns to bother her, making her share everything she learns in school. Pauline is now having a consultation with Reverend Williams. At this point, she acts nasty and rude because she wants to have an actual psychiatrist that she believes could make her better. But her mother tells her that having a psychiatrist is too expensive, so her parents decide to take Reverend Williams's service. Following that scene, Pauline prays to God. She expresses that she doesn't believe in him nor read the Bible. But she tells God that she desires to do premarital sex, although she's pretty aware that God will not be pleased with it. On the other hand, she also tells God if they could talk more about forgiveness and ends her prayer. On the following day, her teacher notices that her answers are all incomplete. Pauline rebuts that this examination has no bearing for her future as a surgeon. Still, her teacher defends that mathematics and surgeon have similarities because there is no room for errors in being a surgeon. After her examination, she goes to the office and sees a paper indicating that her mother enrolled her in cotillion. She finds it awful, so she crashes the paper and leaves the office. That night, Pauline talks about the cotillion thing. Her mother shares that she decided to be a chaperone because she doesn't want her daughter to be in college without knowing the ins and outs of being a proper lady. While everyone is sleeping, Pauline starts to have vivid dreams again about her being in intimate intercourse with a dead body. After a few minutes, she gets her consciousness back, still having the orgasmic feeling. Soon after, Pauline intervenes with the friend of Adam while they are having a chat. She directs her pitch to Adam that she is willing to lose her virginity with him. She says that she is safe and spending her allowances and birth controls and eventually gives her contact details to Adam. In the next scenes, Pauline is vocal to her sister about her desire to lose her virginity while they are playing together, and later on, her mother calls them for an early dinner. Pauline now has vivid dreams again. At this point, she crawls to dead people and soaks her whole body in a bathtub filled with blood while enjoying her orgasmic state. Afterwards, they enjoy their delicious meal, and her mother gets disgusted as she sees her nose pierced. She expresses that she ruined her face, and her father seems to empathize with her, which is why her mother leaves. Inside her bedroom, she is searching for some stuff of a surgeon when Adam calls her. Adam tells her that he is now interested in her offer, and Pauline tells him to do it on Monday afternoon. Pauline asks the permission of her mother. She conceals her reasons by telling that Adam will be her study buddy but will be back after a few hours. Her mother looks pretty supportive to the point that she does her makeup to make her daughter stunning. The time has come, Pauline tells him that they will not need condoms and commands him to take off his pants. Adam is quite shy because Pauline knows about the size of his glamorous eggplants. However, Pauline expresses that it is not an issue for her but rather an advantage to not experience pain. While they are amid their glorious dreams, Pauline gets delusional. She sees the bed filled with blood. Since she is fascinated with blood, she asks Adam to go down on her, which he obliges. He then runs to the bathroom, disgusted by the blood, as he was unaware she was on her period. 
After achieving her ultimate dreams, she talks to God that she doesn't want to be pregnant. She's paranoid even if she takes some birth control pills, but just in case she will abort the baby, a scene suddenly appears in her mind that she does what she prayed and later on wakes up. While her teacher is busy answering the inquiries of his class, Pauline, on the other hand, is busy checking on the microscope if she has STD. Since she is paranoid, she intervenes in the conversation between Adam and Natalie and asks if they have STD. They respond no, and Pauline says if they don't have, then she is neither too. She is talking again with Reverend William. She pitches that science is different from religion. Also, she reveals her psychosexual fantasies, and the Reverend finds her situation awful. Then it shows her praying again, asking God to heal her sister and kill her mother. It sounds rough, but she is very vocal with her thoughts. Grace asks her about the marks on her tummy. She then explains her plans as she gets bullied by Natalie and Abigail because her physique looks like a 10-year-old boy. During their meal, her mother educates her about the beauty of Cotillion, which she might get a nice guy. Still, she refuses because she wants to marry an African-American guy, but her mother views it as awful and begins expressing her racist words. On the following day, she drinks an Ipecac syrup. She does it on purpose so she can vomit to Abigail. Her mother heard about her condition but later revealed her disappointment because she knew she was not sick. Pauline defended herself, telling that the reason behind it is because she could use it as an excuse for the cotillion, but she failed. The cotillion is now beginning. Grace starts to do the waltz with a handsome guy. The dance is getting intimate, and she loses her control, and her mother sees them and later on stops their thing. Grace tries to defend herself for being vulnerable, but her mother tells her that she will take off all her privileges from now on, and grave leaves. But on the other hand, a cute guy invites Pauline to dance with him. They begin to chat, and the guy asks about her cold sore. But Pauline gets attracted to him, so she kisses him. But the guy refuses that gets the attention of everyone. He does it out of his fear of getting infected with her herpes. Phyllis drops Pauline to her school, but Pauline cuts her class and chooses to study surgeons at the library. When she arrived home, her mother reprimanded her as she received a call from Principal Campbell for not attending classes. Pauline silently drops the books from her bag to defend herself, but her mother slaps her in return. On that night, she hears everything her mother says against her that she is hard to love. She tried, but it seemed that she was constantly failing. Due to this, Pauline gets affected and starts to be emotional. While walking, she sees a dead bird on the street and picks it. She uses that bird to execute what she is learning from the books about surgery. Since she is fascinated by blood, she licks her hands filled with the dead bird's blood. In the next scene, Pauline is about to rest, but she hears the voice of Abigail and Natalie chatting outside their house, arguing about the correct spelling of cunt. On the following day, her family is shocked to see some vandals against her. Out of her anger, inside the school campus, she courageously spanks the girl's head on the locker who did the vandalism outside of her house. Then later, the principal reprimands her, but she defends her side. However, Principal Campbell is not satisfied with her reasons, so he tells her to pay the consequences. After that event, her parents decide to send her to a psychiatrist. Despite the fact that it is expensive, they are still willing to do it for the sake of her mental health. She tells them to get their savings for her college to cover the expenses for her psychiatrist. Outside their house, her mother tells her husband that Dr. Gray tells her that Grace should proceed with her lung transplant because her situation is getting worse. Pauline is now showing her concern to Grace that she will do whatever it takes to heal her. This scene shows Pauline talking to God about the situation of their family. She expresses that due to these, it makes it hard to believe in his existence. Following her prayer, a vivid dream again shows that she is doing surgery with various people. On the following day, Pauline gives her dad a tea. At first, she cares for her father and tells him that he is not getting any younger anymore, so he must take care of himself, but he doesn't know that the tea has a drug that will cause him to sleep. Outside, she calls the girl who plays the jumping rope. She makes amends with her and invites her to play jump rope in their backyard, but later on, she knocks her out using a chemical. Not long after, Grace is with her. She begins caressing her. Also, she expresses that she might not understand what she will do, but she will thank her soon. Then afterwards, Pauline knocks her out using a chemical to make her sleep. Before she starts everything, she cuts her hair first and proceeds with her thing despite her naivety, but she still insists on it out of her concern and desire. Pauline commences with her surgery in the garage and moves the girl's healthy lungs into her sister. She placed the other lungs on ice, then sewing them both. Meanwhile, Pauline's mother arrives and sees her husband tied up. She panics and frantically screaming. She finds Pauline with the bodies. Pauline explains that it is her first surgery, and although it is messy, it is also lovely. She then urges her mother to look closer. 
Her mother grabs her and screams hysterically before embracing her. The movie ends when Pauline initially seems proud, but then begins to sob and starts crying as well as she realizes what she has done to Grace. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.